Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Duck here once again. Right, okay. Um, I was really quite like happy with uh, the Yakuza 6 review that I did. You know, I, I again, I, I think I've said multiple times, I'd much prefer just like wailing behind a microphone than like um, uh, in front of a camera, so to speak, you know? So I'm gonna keep this up and hopefully, you know, have these out uh, a bit more regularly. And, uh, yeah, we are gonna do a review slash thoughts on Dragon's Crown Pro. Or are we? Um, okay, I, um, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I must confess something, right? Uh, Dragon's Crown Pro, uh, it's, uh, Tuesday right now. The game's not out until, uh, Friday over here. So, what gives, Duck? How the fuck did you play this? Have you finally gotten good with, like, uh, Sony and game companies? Are they sending you free shit to review in advance? Are you that sort of person now? Uh, no, I'm absolutely not. Um, I was sort of reviewing my uh, purchases this month and how irresponsible I've been. Yes, I moan about that at the beginning of every video, every collection update. I swear to God, it does happen. And in this particular instance, I've deduced that I can't buy Dragon's Crown Pro. So I just play through Dragon's Crown on the PS3. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, you cheap arsehole Donald. Um, I've had that fucking game since day one, back in 2013, you know, and I just never played it. I don't know why, I just didn't. Um, so, yeah, I figured this is a good opportunity, let's just fucking do it. Because apparently the game is identical. The only difference is that if you're playing on PlayStation 4 Pro, you get full 4K, which is, I'm sure, very pretty, and there's like an orchestrated soundtrack now, and then obviously you get to play online with people on PlayStation 4 now, but... As far as I'm aware, that really is the only difference, so, yeah, fuck it. Okay, so, uh, I guess I'll start this off by talking a little bit about my history with Vanillaware, Vanillaware being the developer of Dragon's Crown. Now, I always knew who they were, you know, like, you take one look at their game, you know, they're one of those studios that has a very distinct look. You just look at a screenshot of, like, Dragon's Crown, Muramasa, anything, and you're just like... That's a Vanillaware game. It's They've clearly got an identity, for definite. And um, I remember hearing about, like, Odin Sphere and uh, picking it up. And again, just like Dragon's Crown, it was something that I never really properly played. Uh, then, a few years later, I picked up um, Muramasa the Demon Blade for the Wii, which was technically my first, like, uh, Vanillaware game, I'd say. And I love Muramasa. It's a very good game uh, for the Wii. Um, then, fast forward a little bit. Dragon's Crown comes out, I buy that, I don't play it. Um, and then they announce that they're doing a remake of Odin Sphere. Now, the remake comes out, and in my mind, right, I'm thinking, oh no, it's not a remake, it's just like a HD port, that's what every company's doing these days, but no, this was a full-on remake, and they were charging a full-on price for it, like 40 quid, so I saw that and I was like, nah. Um, and then, a couple years later, I pick it up mega cheap in a PlayStation store, and holy fuck guys, holy fuck, I really, really enjoyed the remake of Odin Sphere. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the subtitle to the game, it's Odin Sphere, Le I don't know, but it's it was really, really good, and it came with like a classic mode where you could like play it as it was on the PS2, and it was fucking awful. It was like immediately coming off of the PS4 remake to go back to that. Yeah, they definitely improved a lot of shit with uh, Odin Sphere. Uh, which is actually quite disappointing because here's Dragon's Crown Pro um, and it's still like full price and they've literally changed nothing. So, and, and I actually did really mean to buy Dragon's Crown Pro because I enjoyed Odin Sphere so much and it was my sort of way of like supporting Vanillaware. Uh, for something that I didn't, I mean, I didn't buy, like, Odin Sphere, but, like I said, real world comes through, and it's a load of shit, so, uh, that's that, and eventually I did pick up, like, um, Princess Crown, which was, uh, technically, they weren't vanillaware at that time, but, again, you look at Princess Crown for the Sega Saturn, you just look at it, and you're, like, vanillaware, that's how strong their identity is, it's really good. And they've made, like, other games than that, but those are the only ones I'm really familiar with. But, okay, that's stuff about my uh, little history there. So, how is uh, how is Dragon's Crown? Well, first of all, I'll tell you, it's really pretty. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, again, they're just the 2D paintings, you know? It's not hand-drawn, they're, like, paintings. And they're, oh, it's, it's so nice-looking. It really is. And, you know, it's, um... 
yeah, the backgrounds, you're in these, like, environments for such a short amount of time, and you see, like, all the little details, like, reflections in the water and whatnot. It's just, I, I, I could gush about the visuals for a good while. Um, I'm sort of tempted to say, again, I played this on PS3, and I just came off of Odin Sphere on the PS4. I'm tempted to say that Odin Sphere was a little bit better looking, artistically. Uh, the colour palette in uh, Dragon's Crown is definitely... A bit more brown, you know, like not as brown as you would expect, you know, considering how brown games got during last generation, but y you know what I mean, it's not as colourful, I would say. Um, but uh, in terms of like other aesthetics, I guess, uh, do I bring up a five-year-old uh, drama thing? I want to give my opinion on the character designs. Uh, should I... I mean, they didn't offend me, you know? I mean, they're fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, the Amazon and the Sorceress, they're just like, aye aye, alright, no bother. Uh, my favourite was the elf, I played as the elf, by the way, like, um, she was really the only character design that I really liked. Well, I mean, I guess the, um, the, uh, fuck, I don't even remember, the wizard, was it? The wizard was alright, as was the, uh, the dwarf and, you know, the... F you know, they're all, they're all really exaggerated. That's pretty much the thing. Again, everybody had, like, an opinion on these character designs back in the day, you know? And I, I want to try and stay neutral, but again, I'll just say the elf, elf, elf was the best one. Uh, so she was the one that I played as throughout the whole game. And, um, she, uh, I, I, well, I get, well, let's just talk about the gameplay. You know, the gameplay is actually not, like, uh, previous Vanillaware games where they were all done on a 2D plane. It's actually kind of, it actually plays like Golden Axe. It's a, it's technically, you're on a 3D plane even though everything is in 2D, but yeah, it's, it's fucking Golden Axe or even to the point that you can ride like different monsters and stuff, you know, um, and there's the little like go arrows telling you to advance, you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was very, very Golden Axe and I enjoyed that for sure. Um, uh, but, like, uh, if, if I had to criticize it, it's really, the screen gets, like, so hectic. It's so just, like, so much is happening that I genuinely, up until the end of the game, lost my place on the screen. You know, I thought I was in amongst this, like, flurry, fighting away at some enemies, when in actuality, no, I was on the other side of the screen, hitting fucking nothing. And it was like, that always happened. So, I don't know if that's just me being shy, but that's definitely... Um, it's difficult to see what you're doing, especially because it goes up to four players, you know, you can do this in local multiplayer or online, which I will, uh, come to, uh, in a bit. But, uh, yeah, you're going from room to room, um, fighting all the enemies, you know, you can pick up weapons, you can ride animals to, um, help attack, you know, uh, and it's, it's a button masher in that sense. And it's pretty good, you know, again, it's not as good as Odin Sphere, the, the combat... And I should stress the Odin Sphere remake, and even Muramasa, honestly. I had more fun with it there than I kind of did here, you know? It wasn't really as, like, combo-heavy, or at least it was in my opinion. But mind you, I was just playing as the elf. Who knows, maybe, like, when you play as the fighter or something, maybe he's the one who would have, like, satisfied the gameplay I was looking for. I don't know. Um, I think the game expects you to play through the entire game six times w with each of the, like, um fighter each of the characters that you could play as but I was like fuck that I just had one playthrough with the elf and that was uh that was fine by me but yeah you're going for all these levels and you have like um, a hub world which is like a town area where you can like buy shit accept quests uh, and some other stuff and you go to like one of nine areas and these areas have like alternate paths and um have a good amount of replay value to them but you're essentially going there and either completing an objective or, like, gathering loot. It's a very, like, loot-heavy game because at the end of each mission, you take the loot back, you accumulate your XP, you have it appraised and stuff, you sell it, you keep it, you equip it. Very, very semi-MMO, and considering that the game uh, is very strong on the multiplayer, I think that was sort of the intention, uh, which makes it not as strong if you're playing it single-player, at least in my opinion. Um... Because it's also like uh, it's also fairly grindy in that sense. Because again, the the levels do have alternate paths and uh, can be completed in a 
and there's like lots of little secrets that you can get throughout them as well. So it's not like repetitive or anything. A lot of people said Odin Sphere was repetitive. I, no, shush. Um, but you know, this one doesn't necessarily feel repetitive, but it does feel a little bit grindy. And there's apparently also some like Dark Souls uh, stuff going on there because you can pick up the bones of previous players and recruit them and they will join your party. I don't know, I was playing it online, so I don't know if these, if people are still playing this game up until before the fucking PS4 version comes out, whether I was picking up like randomly generated bones from the game or if it was genuinely um, people who were playing the game, I, I don't know. But either way, it's, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. You know, you get their bones, uh, you take them back to the town, you pay a little bit of money, you resurrect them and boof, they're in your party. And you need to party up in this game, okay? You can't really play it solo, that's for sure, you know, you really have to have the AI components or indeed go online. Uh, should I talk about the online? No, because there's a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, uh, the boss fights were really kick-ass and again, Vanillaware is quite known for their epic boss fights. Uh, at least in my opinion, you know, they were really kick-ass in the Odin Sphere and uh, Muramasa and stuff. You know, screen-filling bosses that you're just hacking away and hacking away at until <laughs> they die. And, um, there was like a Monty Python and the Holy Grail reference that made me so happy. I was just like, ah, <laughs> they were, were, we're fighting this. And the fucking character that's in that stage that directs you to this boss fight was exactly, it was John Cleese. It was fucking John Cleese. It was, um... Yeah, that was that was really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, as you can probably tell throughout this video, uh, multiplayer is definitely important with this game. You know, it's it clearly wants you to team up either with people uh, on the same couch as you playing the game or online. And I didn't really do that. I didn't really. I wasn't really fussed. So again, there's probably a little bit less value in this for the single player. Uh, and that's multiplied even more by the fact that the game doesn't really have a story. Again, to go back to Odin Sphere. Odin Sphere's story was set across like five different characters. And even though you were effectively playing the same levels five different times, it was such a really good story. All five of those characters were uh, really good to play as, really good to like, you know, see their adventure through to the end. And then uh, this one, it's not really there. It's It kind of takes, again... Uh, I guess a Dark Souls approach where there isn't technically a story, there's just a world with like lore and all that to it, you know? Um, and you know, that's fine. Some people dig it. I kind of prefer a proper story. So, uh, yeah, Dragon's Crown, it was good. It was good, but it's one of those types of good where you're just like, yeah, it, it was good, you know? Uh, again, I'm totally reviewing this from a single player's perspective, you know? Uh, if you. Uh, are interested in this game on the PS4 and you have some people whom you can play with, by all means give this a go because you will probably love it. And if not, it looks damn pretty. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much that. Um, I actually went out of the way to see, because I, I've heard this name a lot. Um, Vanillaware are making their, uh, their new game, uh, which is called, I swear to God I am not currently uh, googling this. Um, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. What a name that is. And apparently this is, again, there's only a trailer for this. There's no gameplay. Again, you look at the trailer and you're just like, Vanillaware game. And apparently this is going to be like a tactical role-playing game. Maybe in the same style of something like Fire Emblem or Valkyria Chronicles. So a game that looks like that and plays like that, yeah, I'll, I'd be up for that. It's apparently coming out by the end of this year as well, too. Um, I don't know if... At least in Japan, who knows when we'll get it. But apparently apparently we will. Apparently we will. So I will definitely uh, be on the lookout for that. But all aware of practically... Like, are they Atlas? I, I think they're an independent company, but Atlas just, like, um, always publishes their games, which I guess by extension, Sega publishes them. Oh, fuck. Here's me thinking that I was going to make a video that wasn't directly tied to Sega in some way. You were going to do something a bit different, weren't you, Doug? But nope, you actually... This is a Sega video again, actually. Sega is literally right there in the title screen, even on the PS3 version, so... Yeah. Anyway. Fuck it. Fuck it. So, yeah, Dragon's Crown. You know, a, f a decent recommendation for me. Yeah, th there we go. That's that. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.